For most of our millionaires, a luxurious home from home on the waves is what they see. But one mega yacht owner goes for something much more basic. He's turned on by raw power. Mega yacht owner John Stalupi has been obsessed by large boats since he was a small boy. When I was younger, um, I had boats which were 18 feet, 20 feet, and I would always envy all these big yachts going by me, and I would say, someday I'm going to have one of them. But John didn't just want a racing boat, he wanted it all. Speed, power, and luxury. Over the years, he built a succession of mega yachts, each more powerful and faster than the last. But when he wanted a boat to go 55 miles per hour, no one was interested. And I went to about 15 different shipyards all around the world. And I said to them, I want to do 50 knots. This is how much horsepower I want, but I want the boat to be 130 feet. And half the shipyards thought I was crazy. You know, they says this guy's wacky. He's he's from space. But they says impossible, but you can't do what you want. John was not to be put off from his quest to create the fastest mega yacht ever. He set up his own company called Millennium Super Yachts, and he built his latest boat. The world is not enough. It's 140 feet long and 28 feet wide, with a top speed of 75 miles per hour. For a boat this size, that's fast. In fact, it's one of the fastest mega yachts in the world. But though it's built for speed, it's designed for luxury. This is the uh, master stateroom. The room is huge in here. You got full size, king size bed, um, flat screen TV. It's, it's the real spacious, unusual uh, master that someone would not expect. Pretty much have all the comforts of home, but then some. This is the master head, uh, which we would call master bathroom. This has a his bathroom and also a hus bathroom. This master shower is just unbelievable. You could literally put five people in here. I don't know how many guys' wives would like that, but it would be nice. The key to the boat's speed is to keep everything light. This is what the whole boat is made out of. I know it looks heavy, but uh, this is literally honeycomb, and all the furniture is built this way. This is what sets this type of a yacht apart from a standard yacht. Even the stone flooring is made from special honeycomb material to keep the weight down. The yacht has room for 10 guests and eight crew, who are all catered for in a galley most homes would be proud to have. We got a full working galley here. Uh, as you can see, we got Mikey, our chef. It's, we call him Chef Boyardee. Uh, we have two convection ovens, two sub-zeros that were custom made for us to keep the weight down. This is called a country kitchen, which we still have a formal dining room in this boat, but the country kitchen offers two places to eat. If you don't want to sit in the dining room and be real formal, we can sit in here. The yacht is controlled from a state-of-the-art bridge. And this is our pilot house, which we call a command center, where really everything happens here. This little control here, believe it or not, controls everything. Uh, this could steer the boat forward, backwards, uh, bow thruster on this thing. This is our turbine controls, and this is our diesel controls. But if you look at this uh, pilot house, it's kind of unique compared to pilot houses. Everybody could be here at the focal point on the speed and sit down and enjoy themselves and have a cocktail. Upstairs is the Sky Lounge and Bar. Most Sky Lounges don't have the uh, view that this has. Uh, this Sky Lounge happens to offer tremendous amount of view. And, oh, we got Frank Mulder, who is the engineer here, who the engineer in design, and Evan Martian, who did the interior. I keep them in the bar area, so when we start drinking and we don't do the speed and the interior is not good, it's easier to get them off the top of the boat than get them off the bottom of the boat. Up on deck, it's equally luxurious and unique. This is our flybridge up here. As you can see, we have a jacuzzi. 
We got full controls up here. We could run the turbine from up here. We could run the diesels from up here. It's just as if we were in the pilot house down below. John has brought his boat to Rotterdam, Holland for the final sea trials. The last time he took it out, he wasn't able to use the yacht's full power. We ran the sea trial about four or five weeks ago, and we did 74 miles an hour, which was 64 knots. Pretty impressive, but we were only able to use 90% power on the turbines. So today we're hoping to be able to use all the power and make the speed. The world is not enough has two diesel engines and two turbine engines producing 20,000 horsepower. That's a lot of muscle. And to drive these engines takes a lot of fuel. You probably wouldn't want to come here and pay for the fuel when we're going fast because you'll melt your credit card. With all that power below decks, it's not surprising that passengers can get a little apprehensive. <laughs> People, when you first tell them you're gonna, how fast you're going to go, they're like, where should I sit? What should I do? What should I hold on to? I mean, on a nice day, you'll be able to go out there, be able to walk around, talk like we're talking, have a drink, do 50 knots. You won't even know it. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, baby. Once out on the water, the team puts the world is not enough through its paces. The team is having problems steering and don't reach their goal of 75 miles per hour. However, when it comes to speed, even performing below par, the world is not enough is a cut above the rest. I was quite happy with the ride. And, and the performance, even though I was a little disappointed that we didn't make the full speed, but we still did over 61 knots, and that's pretty good for 140 foot boats, still having a lot of power left. The world is not enough has cost in excess of $30 million. It's the latest in a long line of extraordinary vessels that have become more sophisticated, more lavish, and more powerful. I think the envelope will continue to be pushed all the time of a little bit bigger, a little bit better, a little bit faster. And that population of owners and vessels continues to grow. Uh, so it is an industry here to stay.